Right, okay. Good, Good morning. morning, everyone. We are live on the edge of the Leeds Liverpool Canal. We are at Bramley Falls, which is a set of locks that's about 10 15 minutes walk up the canal from Hollybush. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. Good morning. I'm Freya. And I'm Alex behind the camera. And this is our friend, the little frog that we've just found while we were trying to, we were clearing a little place for us to. Oh. See if we can get it hopping away. We were clearing the grass so we could um, sit down, and there were just we so go. many frogs. So we popped that one in the tray, but there was a tiny one, a bigger one. So we've just thought we'd show you that one to start off with. So, yeah, we're at the canal today because we've done a few pond dips in these live streams and we've done a walk along the canal. But we were aware that most people don't have space for a pond big enough to do a pond dip in their garden. But one thing that most people do have is access to the canal. So this is managed by the Canal and River Trust. It's public access. There's the towpath just over that side that you can join at Rodley, you can join at Horsworth, you can join in Kirksville, you can join in town, you can join all the way along it. You can get on this. It's public access. Anyone can come along. You can cross at the locks. So what we've done is we've walked up on the towpath on that far side. And then we've crossed over on the little bridge over there. So we thought, well, got the train line there. So I don't know if you've heard the train path in there. But we've come over to the quieter side. So we've got a little bit less cyclists and pedestrians and people coming up behind us asking. But we are out in public. So people might come up and interact with us. But we, we think we've found a quiet corner. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, we are just going to run through a few pointers on how to do a pond dip on the canal what you might see and just how to do it safely because there are a few risks without involved. going for a swim without going for a swim <laughs> without giving yourself a poorly tummy yeah so i think yeah that is the first thing we said was if you're taking a picnic with you it's a sunny day mm -hmm. you're thinking you might go catch some little fishes if you want to do a picnic have it before you do the pond dip so do that first so maybe do the pond dip after lunch because there is different things like we are in a city the, the water's not necessarily clean so you want to make sure that before you're touching your mouth before you're eating before you any of that that you are washing your yeah. hands properly with soap and water so if you do want a picnic even if you take an anti-vac gel you do want to make sure you're having a proper hand wash yeah like so try and eat your lunch first basically we've not eaten our lunch first because it's 11 o'clock in the morning but we'll go back to the center and we'll wash our hands properly before <laughs> we do eat so that's the first thing and if you've got any little cuts or anything or if you're doing this with a child make sure you check for them but just properly check your hands on both sides make sure you've got no breaks in the skin or anything and if you do just make sure you're wearing a waterproof plaster because the water's not that clean so you don't want to be getting any infections in it i don't know if the camera can pick it up but on the surface of the water it's quite a bit of um sort of oily scum so it's that Ooh, sort of oily scum it's really not pleasant um and it's why year after year the canal and river trust say to people do not go for a swim in the canal just don't do it it's just not it's not the same as an open freshwater lake or a river it is yeah. semi-stagnant like it's... yeah that only scum, that's usually sort of that's breaking down plant material yeah. so if the stuff rots in stagnant water it kind of forms that mm. oily film but there's also other stuff like it's it's got an industrial history so there's potentially chemicals in it we are in an urban setting and there's little nibbly creatures like rats that are sort of going in it so there's there is i don't want to put you off like it is great yeah. but do just bear in mind that you do need to take precautions so now we've thoroughly put you off engaging with the canal <laughs> in any way no <laughs> so, just want to make sure so we come up to the edge we've mm -hmm. got a solid bit of edge the bank's solid it's not going to crumble underneath us she says she hopes and so choose that. We've cleared away the um, brash. Brash. Checking that's what the species of plant is. So that's hogweed, not giant hogweed. Yeah, yeah. So um, giant hogweed is an invasive species that can cause problems. But this is common hogweed, which is okay. But make sure you're not. If there is giant hogweed, familiarise yourself with that. Or if you're not certain, 
don't work next to that because yeah. if it is giant hogweed that can cause skin and irritation it's bad it's like a nettle that reappears every year when the sun gets when the hot. Su yeah, yeah it makes you allergic to sunshine yeah. on bits of your skin it's basically not a pleasant which thing to get no one by. wants that no and then making sure you're kneeling down and then so from kneeling down don't be leaning too far over so it is a little bit of a way down so if you're doing this with kids maybe an adult do this yeah. bit but um we're going to come down two hands just get a little bit of water in the bottom so what this is and i am getting some pond weed is this gives if you're catching anything on your pond dip you want to make sure that you are providing them with somewhere to go because they live in water they survive in water so as soon as you take them out of the water you want to make sure that you're putting them back in water so you have that prepped and ready to go beforehand oh hello is that a phantom midge larvae casey yeah. oh and a snail so i've already caught some stuff at this stage oh there's loads of them actually uh, they look like they're exoskeletons but we've got a pond dipping tray here and actually it's kind of like an old school insert tray that you get your pencils in or they don't my school but we've got that but you really don't need to use anything fancy you can use an old ice cream container you can use an old anything that holds water that's big yeah. enough to empty so we've got this net, whatever net you can find, just something that you can empty out on. So it only would have to be like that big. Another thing, it's not that sunny today, but it is summer. It is going to be sunny later. It's likely if you're going out and doing this, you might choose a sunny day to do it. And you're more likely to get more stuff up around the surface mm -hmm. on a sunny day. But what that means is don't leave this out too long. Oh, hello. Yeah. I'll let you get in close once. Yeah. But don't leave this out too long because you'll it'll warm up very quickly. Mm -hmm. What's this little that fella? That is a little caddis fly larvae. Is That's... it a caseless one? Then. I don't know. I think it has made its own little case. It's just a, it looks like a younger one. Because you get caseless caddis flies and you get case caddis flies, yeah. don't you? So they're two different species. So case caddis flies. I think it's got, it's quite difficult to see, but it does look like it's got something. Yeah, it looks like it's made that. Yeah. So you can see that that's actually moving. Oh, yeah, it's just like a little blade of grass. <laughs> Look at its little legs go. <laughs> so that's without even doing the pond dip, this tray is already teeming with yeah. life. So we've got a little pond skater there. We've got loads of little hog, like um, water fleas, Daphnia, Cyclops things. These everywhere. I don't know if you can, can you see these little black spots that are just moving around? Yeah, you can. Uh, yeah, yeah. There's a snail just here on snails. So these aren't sea snails. Quite a lot of the time people go, oh, it's a sea snail. It's not a sea snail. We're not in the sea. They would not like the salty water. And yeah, no. we've got all of these. These are, I'll pick this one up. So and I'll put it back in the water because it was easier to see. But just so you can <laughs> see what you're looking for as I put it back down. That's the casing of something. So that's an exoskeleton. So that's not alive. But there's actually a few of them, I think. I, oh, oh I water boatman as well. Mm. Well, that was a very straightforward bit of pond dipping, wasn't it? Just I think that might be a damselfly exoskeleton. You know, do you think? I think it might be because it's too big for phantom midge. Yeah, it looks like a, I, I said phantom midge when I first saw it because it was transparent. So the phantom midge larvae are a trans that you can mm. see right through them, but they're we, That's when they're alive, but it's harder to tell when I, it's. I think it's damselfly. Yeah. Um, it obviously, right. it's been it's opened up a little bit, so it's not the size it would and have been. They've but... kind of got. Ooh, little filaments normally that come yeah. out of the back that they've because it's left the exoskeleton it's kind of hard to tell because some of the features are yeah. missing but i think you might be right right shall we shall we do a dip so where yeah. we're dipping if you can see in the water i'll let you get into this oh, gap so that you can get you in closer so in the water we've chosen an area it's nice and quiet it's on a corner but also underneath you can see there's lots of do you want me to hold the camera while you down? life yeah so we'll try not to drop alex in the canal so in the water, there's lots and lots of, of, of plants, which is great because that's the habitat. They, animals tend not to like just open water. They like to be in and around where the shelter is. So with this net, I've got here, it's not a net that you would get from the seaside for crabbing. This, the mesh on this is very, very fine, kind of like a plastic sieve or something. Yeah. So, so you can really just use a mesh. sieve on a stick. Yeah. Maybe don't use it in your kitchen again. <laughs> But if you have only got like a little cheap seaside net, 
it'll one still for work. a pound. Like yeah. it's better than nothing, and you'll catch some of the bigger things. You might not get all of these tiny little um, Daphnia, mm. but you will still get sort of the caddisfly and things. Oh, that caddisfly is going for it. I think it's eating all the Daphnia. It's having a right. whale of a time. So same with pond dips. Chomp, chomp. I'm going to get in. I'm going to try and brush. By get in, you mean uh, get the net in. Get the net in. I'm going to Don't... brush up against all of the leaves. I'm even going to try and disturb the side a little bit. And you just do a gentle figure of eight, don't you? So you can see he's turning the net round as he goes. And you do it really gently. So you're trying to get actually living things. Firstly, you don't want to injure them. But secondly, they don't want to be caught, which means if you go in all guns blazing, waving it around, bashing things about, they're going to run away. Ooh. I can see I've caught so some now interesting things. Fish that out. You bring it over straight away to the tray. Turn it upside down and then just sort of gently wiggle it. You do a bit of wiggling from side to side just to dislodge anything. And that will hopefully... Ooh! Uh, that was a good one. Okay. Oh, wow. Yeah, brilliant. So I'm going to just... I'll get this out just so we can see. Yeah. So... Can even check all of them? Is there something on it? No, there's no eggs okay. or anything. No, right. So... Got loads of stuff there. So just one sweep. One simple sweep. I keep thinking that's a tadpole, but that's not. That's a... <laughs> right. Something. What should we have a look at first? Let's have a look no, at... We've got that. We were talking about the May... Oh, yeah. The um, damselfly larvae, so... This here is a damselfly larvae. It's quite a big one. So this we were saying those exoskeletons go. might have been this. Yeah. This is one that... And the fact it's this big, that kind of tells us that it is nearly ready to emerge. So it's yeah. probably been in there since last year. And... We looked at a few of them when we did the walk along the canal. But that implies that those exoskeletons probably were, because they're probably ones that have already done it, because it's the right time of year for them to come out. But they are... Let's see, that's one of the exoskeletons there. So that's the ribbed, the ribbed at the back there is what made me think it was the, the damselfly yeah. larvae. And then the darker bit at the top is what I think used to be the head. And they... They keep their legs, they don't, they don't lose their legs. They kind of climb out of the casing yeah. with them. And then they're the sort of li little electric blue things with the, that look a bit like dragonflies mm. and the brightly coloured red ones and things. I don't know exactly what species this is from well, the, the way, larvae. But... From looking at it, you have to get them under a microscope and look at their little feathers at the back. So their gills at the back there. And their gills have different numbers of dots or stripes on them. And that's how you tell. So we're not going to be able to tell from, from looking at it like this. I did also see a freshwater shrimp. Yeah, there were a few things. So we've got this, more snails. What is that thing? Can you... So we've got just little bits of grass that we're using for poking. So just be, But we're just being super gentle when we're moving things around. I think that is just a, yeah, that's just a seed casing, that one is. And just, shrimp it is good to get a few bits of um, oh, there's, there's a, there's a plant blob, life. There's a blob here. Ooh, so this yes. here, I think, would have been an egg. It doesn't have, doesn't look like it's got anything in the middle of it at the moment. So it probably maybe some unsuccessful frog spawn. Um, but yeah, it's like a jelly blob. And then we've got something that's stuck, which I think there was on that other blade that you took out. There was something oh, right, similar. Okay. I'm not certain what it is. Could be another caddis fly. That's just... No, it's not focusing on it. Uh, I can't see quite what. You have a look at that and see if you can ID that, Alex. Yeah, well, I'm just going to try and go. Alex is better at the, at the water stuff than I am. Oh, there's a tiny snail in the back of this as well. So it is good to include some vegetation when you... Um, do this because it gives mm. things a place to shelter it'll make them less stressed it'll also you they might behave a little bit more naturally it is it's a caddis fly that's in a caddis fly larvae that's in a bit of old Ooh, look at this snail grass there. i think watch that snail going along you can see all the daphnia little, those little specks moving around it that's all the daphnia i wonder where that shrimp's gone did you see it when it went in as well? The I don't shrimp? think I did see the shrimp. They usually hide around the 
Oh, there we there go. We go. So that there is a freshwater shrimp. It okay. will get bigger than that. That's not that they will get a little bigger than that. Not as big as uh, saltwater shrimp, but the way you tell the difference between these and other crustaceans that live in the freshwater is that these swim sort of on their side. They're kind of funny the way that they move around. Yee, zoom. The there you go. You see, it's sort of swimming on its side like that. But yeah. I think I, I was probably a teenager before I realised we had freshwater shrimp. I thought shrimp were just what you get in the ocean. But... Well, there's another little egg casing Very thing cool. down here as well. Let's see if I can... Just down here. If I can get the... Oh, yeah. It's another little... There. Very cool. Oh, and there's another... This I think this might be pond snails. Uh, pond snail eggs they kind of lay them in strips along the edge of things and that will ha hatch and make more freshwater right. snails right I'll go for another dip I might do it from a different area though do you want to swap with me again yeah oh you do it dip. Do, you do yeah. a dip go on we'll swap over Fred is one from over that side <laughs> I mean I, another thing about the canal is you've got all these sort of tributaries that come off of it um, off yeah. the side and these can be quite a nice area to also Maybe I should do a little bit along yeah, this sort of... along the top bit. So, yeah. um, again, actually, could you move the... I'll bring the tray a little bit closer. Yeah. So I'm going to move the tray, but again, being super careful, because everything in this tray... Is alive. Is alive, and it needs the water to survive, which means if we empty it out on the side, we could do them harm. So... Yeah, I'd say if you can avoid moving the tray. Yeah. But we're doing this. So you'd empty that one over there and then start again over here, perhaps. I think if you were going to be going from, a, if you're walking 100 metres away, I would I would empty it back out again. We're on the same little corner. Um, yeah, let me just throw the camera for a second. So I'm going to come down here, I think. So. Along the edge, so this is where it's coming over the uh, waterfall a bit. So it's a slightly different vegetation. So I'm going to give it a go. I'm not going to do the figure of eight as well this time because the yeah, space you're is left. Place, so, yeah. But I'm just going to gently run the net along the top of these mossy balls, and then I'm going to gently turn it round again and run back the other way. But I'm going to do it softly. I don't think I've got, I've got as much life as Alex got in the last one. Well, it's just, yeah, it's Flip just, it just, over. Just, just. Oh, you've got a little pond. You've got a, a fresh, some beetles. Oh, there's a little fly on the circle. So the thing that I'm tracking now in the centre of the screen is a diving beetle. Um, again, way too small for me to ID, but they get, is it a beetle or is it a boatman? I think that's actually, that's a boatman. Yeah. Yeah. Can see the down here? Are they tiny little? Yeah, I think, I think, I think they are, you know. They might be this year's ones. We've seen lots of them mating, so this is the result of that. So we saw that big one earlier. Mm. That's the, probably last year's one, this one down here. But there's tiny, tiny ones that down here that are bit probably this year's one. Ooh, what are you? Oh, there we go. That's a bit of a shrimp, I think. That's a tiny Baby little freshwater shrimp. shrimp. a few times it's teeming every when you're looking through the camera lens oh, it's oh there we go oh, I've got another trim I've got another trim actually I've got a fib another trim I don't know I think it might be a hog though it doesn't want to come out oh no it's a shrimp you're right yeah, yeah it's a shrimp body's a bit long yeah. it's teeming 
tangled in this moss. Oh no, it's a hog glass. Yay. That's a freshwater hog glass. So you can see, or is it a shrimp? No, it's a shrimp. <laughs> so when they're when they're still and you're they're small, it's hard to tell. But it's, it's got that move, sort it? of sea body, so like a figure of sea, a figure of sea, a letter C. Um, and I'm trying to get in closer. That one's a bit more still because it's got this. As I was saying about having the vegetation, you can sometimes get things to sit a little bit stiller because they're more comfortable, they feel secure, mm. which means you can sometimes get a better look rather than if it's just an empty tray without the plants and they'll be darting round and they'll be trying to find somewhere to hide and that's more stressful for them mm. and you're less likely to get a good look. So having this little bit of vegetation, this little bit of plant life in there. Look at it, it? You can see it's got these massive whiskers at the front. Oh, you can see the gill. Well, I can see. You probably can't pick yeah, it up. I was trying to pick that up on the camera. The you couldn't see. The gills are sort of wobbling. They're sort of doing this at the back. You can just see it's all undulating. I think is probably the word. But they're all sort of moving at the back to get the oxygen flowing over it. What do you reckon? Should we do one more dip? One more dip. Yeah. Do it in this side. Yeah, you can do. So this bit here is coming off the edge. This is quite. This is fast flowing. This area. I'm peeling down, I'm not standing up. I'm coming down, this one's a bit shallower. I'm not leaning too far. Right, so my shoulders are above my knees, I'm not leaning right out over. Also, I'd say I'm not doing this on my own, there's someone with me, which means if I fall in, hopefully. I can laugh. <laughs> yeah. No, I can, I can help out if she falls in, out. yeah. There's someone to get help if anything goes mm -hmm. wrong. So I would say take someone with you if you're doing this. Quite a few pond skaters. See on the surface of the water. I think I just saw quite a big one actually. Oh yeah, there you go. It's a, it's a water bird then. That's a... Uh... Oh, I can't remember for life me which way around it is now. Oh, I don't think I've ever seen one sat still. Where? Just there. Oh. Oh, well, there he goes. Unfortunately, oh, when they are fast enough, you get in close to them, they start up until they don't swim off. Well, just like a one sat on the side of the lake. Oh, no. It's got really pretty patterning on it, hasn't it? Mm. When they get a bit bigger, when you get a greater water Burtman, they can be like quite like lime green and quite yeah. beautiful colours. Mm. Again, we've found all of this life with what four dips. Three, so, uh, three and the train. train yeah. Itself, the first time came out. So. And even as I said, when we were clearing, yeah. the underglow froze there. There were loads of frogs in it as well. I would say the frogs put them back in the underglow. They don't yes. want to go in the canal. Yeah. They show the at this time of year they want to be out of mm -hmm. the water. Mm -hmm. And I think, I could just sit here and watch this for hours. But we won't make you guys watch it. Shall we <laughs> have another little exactly? Okay. Mm. So this, shall we show, shall we put Should it we back? Shall we show how to put it back in? Yeah. So again, you shouldn't sit and watch it for hours. Like I said earlier, on not in full sun now, but later on this afternoon we will be in full sun. If you get distracted and Start chatting. This water will warm up quickly, and all of these are a size they're used to dealing with the temperature mm. of the canal, which is colder than the big body of the water that's moving. In this tray, it's a very small amount, and if you've only got like an ice cream tub or something, it's a very small amount of water that will warm up very quickly. And even if it just gets up to sort of 21 degrees or whatever the air temperature yeah. is, for these little guys, something so small, that is. A degree, a degree change in yeah. temperature can be fatal. Yeah. So you want to make sure that as soon as you've done, but oh, what's that? Oh, what's that? Watch them squiggle around before you get bored, or before you do too many dip plates. Release and then get more. Yes. Yeah. Carry on, but change that water over. Mm -hmm. You don't want to be keeping your catching a tadpole and keeping it in a jar all day. You'll kill it. So what we do now? I might come around to this side to look. Yeah. Yeah. 
down again. Then we'll go. Oh, there's a camera. I don't, the camera won't pick it up. And there's no yeah. way we'll be able to catch it. I can I can see the fish, but yeah. How is that? I'm definitely not going to catch a fish first. Right. Just that is instead good. of doing the figure of eight, do one gentle sweep yeah. quite quickly. <laughs> this is a three or four, Jim. Like they're 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 yeah. sort of out there, yeah. Yeah, no, never mind. There you go. Yeah, it does. <laughs> That'd be quite funny. You'd smell bad for the rest of the day, though, so I don't think I'd like that. <laughs> Smelling like a canal. Smelling like Tom. So, yeah, get two hands on each side of the tray. And then lowering it down. Do all of these things are living briefly, so you want to lower it down so they've got as little of this as possible, can you? Yeah. And then just get it under the water, floss it around it so all of the snails and things get yeah. to the bottom. Come away. So there's one or two that are still attached, so I'm just going to get another little stick. Little stick. Gently. So, move it off. Give it a little one so there's one more that is on. Then get that off. A bit of water when it's sort of unstuck. There you go. There we go. And that's got rid of all of them. Mm hmm. I'm going to take it back in the water. <laughs> <laughs> All the water's back in there. You can see there's nothing in that tray. Anymore. And we can carry this back now. Do so make sure, yeah, if you've got an ice cream tub, make sure you're taking it back with you. Yeah. That's another thing we mentioned that we were talking about on the way up, actually. If you do catch anything cool, if you do catch yourself, it's hand holding, catch yourself strong, catch yourself immune to fish. Put it back however much you want to take it away. Should never be introducing cross spawn to your pond from another water source. If you've got a pond in the garden, you want to introduce wildlife to. I've got to get it from a reputable timber, from a shop, a pet shop, or something. Or you wait until wildlife finds its own way there. You can't. But it's really bad for spreading diseases and things between amphibians if people go in between the water bodies and taking it. So if you find like cross spawn or tadpole, try not to serve the cross spawn. And, if, and try and get a tadpole, look at them for a bit, and then put them back in straight after. Don't take them home with you. I know it's tempting. I know it's, I, I know it's tempting, but I know a lot of people <laughs> have done it when they were kids, but we now know that it's something we really should be doing. Mm. So that, that's the that's one that. we're looking out. Yeah. And again, making sure that we're remembering, don't touch your face now, don't be eating your lunch now, don't be mm. having a snack. Be, we'll go back to Hollybush now, we'll wash all of this equipment really thoroughly, we'll leave it for a few days and wash it really thoroughly before we use it in any other pond, because again, we don't want to be spreading infections between different water sources. Yeah. So, we'll do that. And then, yeah, we'll enjoy the rest of the afternoon. Yeah. I hope that a few of you do go out and do some pond in the canal because it is a really worthwhile thing isn't it yeah really uh, this time of year it's amazing to do because you get all of the sort of mature things like we were catching and you get the new sort of hatched things as well so we we had you can see teenage damselfly larvae and also brand new baby ones and it's really nice to compare the two um you don't catch like frogs yeah the, um, yeah, the, the, the young fish yeah the baby ducks yeah Oh, it's a, it's a great now. time of year to get out. Just yeah, look that way, like how lovely it is. It's just a lovely walk. Isn't it? I'd say if if you spent a year inside and you are going out at the weekend and in a pond dip, uh, canal dip, put on some sun cream. Oh, yeah. um, you can get caught out very easily. I burnt my shoulders a couple of weeks ago because I didn't think about sun cream. Um, so yeah. Well, that's... Wrap up our pond dip, I reckon. Yeah. Thanks very much for joining us. Thank you very much. It was the...
this is the last weekly live stream we're going to do for a little while. We're, mm -hmm. gonna, we're still going to be doing them sometimes when there's a special event yeah. or something that we particularly want to tell you about. Mm -hmm. But we are going to be uh, slowing down a little bit. Yeah. We got on a little bit of a hiatus, yeah. So it could be new and exciting next time. But if, if you're really wanting to get your fix of Freya and Alex live stream, we've got all of them that we've done from, God, when was it? Sort of March May, last year. Yeah, March May last, last year. You Your can go back live stream. and they're on all of our socials so they're you can on find them. Our YouTube channel, TV YouTube channel, they're mm -hmm. on um, the Point of Channel Scale Grange Facebook page. A few of the early ones only went to Scale Grange Facebook yeah. page. So they're on the playlist close to nature. So do go and take a look. We did do quite, there's a lot. If you want to know more about Pondits and things, we have done quite a few. <laughs> if you want to see new pages, yeah. Um, yeah, thank you very much to people that have been joining us yeah. on the live stream. We've enjoyed ourselves. Mm -hmm. It's been a nice way to end on the least difficult amount. I think so. <laughs> I hope you enjoy the rest of your day. Thank you Take very much care. for joining us. Bye-bye.